right, here we are. I've been working on this intarsia piece for a little bit. Um, I'm doing it in sections, and so the section I'm working on, the needles are in working position. And then you can see here, these needles are in non-working position. So um, I'm con just continuing my lace patterning as I go. I have a pattern. I'm working on this pattern. I drew it up in Google Docs. Then I had to mirror the image I drew up in Google Docs. And then I realized I actually needed it. So this was it mirrored. Then I turned it 90 degrees and had to do it again. I like to keep my um, column widths at 30 and my row height at 20. And that seems to be very similar to what knitting graph paper is. Um, so on my pattern, I have pink. And the pink is my main color in the lace patterning. The gray right here is the main color, but I'm doing it in stockinette. So there's just gonna be this edge around my intarsia where there isn't lace patterning. And then of course the other colors are self-explanatory. I had a mistake and I had to go back and find my mistake in here. So this was me checking areas. And then in my piece, you can actually see my red safety pin here is this row. So I know that row is totally correct. So I just left those markers in there, if you're wondering. But that's my piece. So I am going to run this carriage over and then I'll bring the video back. I have my carriage on my left side, but, and I need to take the yarn off the carriage, which will involve unhooking this, and then I need to pull the needles into non-working position. But before I do that, it's really hard to set your eyelets when your, lat your latch is uh, in front of the stitch. So while the stitches are in front of the latch, I'm gonna fix all my eyelets for this section. All right, I have fixed the eyelets. So, time to pull it out. Now my needles are in non-working position and I'm actually going to slide my carriage back over where they, where that section is because I'm moving left to right. I just find it easy to do this next part just to the left of where I'm working. I have my yarn and it's stuck in here. So I'm going to pop this out and I'm going to get my yarn out. All right, I am going to, you can see it's crossed. I am going to go over those three hooks. And then I am going to knit them. Perfectly. Now, get my brown yarn down. The next color I need is black, and it is right here. I'm going to pick it up. I am using it uh, since it's a small section of black. I took some off the skein. I just put it on a piece of cardboard to use it as a bobbin. Then I clip it with a little metal clip. So again. Right here, there's the cross, it's going over it. I need one stitch and I am, I'm also cinching it a little so there's no hole. That's why I'm crossing them over and then I'm doing a tiny little cinch so I'm preventing holes in the, the knitting. Like right here, you, there's a little hole, but after I crisscross these and take the white up, I will cinch that shut just like that. That's the why I'm doing it in this manner. So here we go. The two are crossed. I'm actually going to take these four needles out of play. And because I'm doing a large area of white, I'm going to take the yarn up, hook it in. And 
then hook that back in. And you notice I put my white right in front of the needle I needed to be at. That way I'm not guessing later. Close that. Put my yarn in the back. Hook it into the carrot. So I'm gonna take my needles, I'm gonna put them into play. I'm just using my card. Now, again, one of these needles has to be black this next time around. So I've changed that up. So I'm gonna make sure all my needles are open. And then, now I'm, I'm gonna run my carriage over it. Maybe I do not have the phone charging cord on it. We are a little stuck. All right, I have moved it all the way across the white. What I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna take my needles all the way out, and then I'm gonna move this back over the white. It's hooked there. And time to take it out of here. Another thing I've been doing you can see a little more clearly here is I have been hanging my colored yarns down the back of the piece that way I can easily take them out pick them up uh, and use them as I need them they are just sitting at my feet um, in places and at times they get tangled and I have to fix it but that's okay so now I have the black yarn I've crisscrossed them That is the spot I need it to be because this will be the first black needle. Now looking at my pattern, I knew I was gonna use one needle in white and then one of my black needles will be in the next white part of the pattern. So open up my needles. I'm just kind of pulling this thread a little tight as we approach, give it a little cinch, and we are running it across the black. Now, take my black needles out of play. I pull the yarn to the front, and then yeah, I go back over to this direction, to the left, totally out. Next part of my section is four whites and I am actually going to re-thread that for that. I'm not going to do that by hand. My rule of thumb is if it's three, do it by hand. If it's four, put it in the carriage. So I have the two crossed putting this up in between. It's now in there. These are my four needles. They need to be white. Take a moment, open them up. I don't want my stitches to drop. Take those needles out of play, bring my carriage back. All right, my next section is black. So I'm actually going to have to add a new black thread. So I'm gonna come back and we're gonna add a new black yarn and go for it. All right, I'm ready, ready to add new yarn. I have about two yards of yarn right here, uh, mostly wrapped up in here. I am going to Run it through the carriage since it is four stitches. Okay, I have it over here, even though my stitches are over there, 
They're pushed in, the latches are open, and I am just gonna run it across. It's gonna run safely across these because they're out of play. And then it knit right here. I am, however, going to stick a clap clip on that for the moment until I'm done with the row. Take the needles out of play, bring the carriage back over. And now I have my yarn in my clip and I'm just going to drop it. Now the reason why I added a black new thread instead of just floating all my different black threads back here is I don't want the black to be seen from the front. I am however floating the white so the white I just did on these stitches are gonna float these four stitches and they'll do these next four stitches because I'm not worried about the white showing up on the front but I am very much worried about the black showing up on the front of this piece so I am floating white not floating black that is my preference. Those needles come out of play. This comes all the way back. Again, we pop the yarn out of the carriage. Now the next color is black. I have this one also on a little clip. I've crossed them. This is one stitch. So I've made one stitch. Now we are going to float the white across that one stitch and we're going to hand stitch two white ones. Now we have another black. This one, however, happens to be the main skein. We are going to twist that with the white. One stitch. And then we have three light browns. head of my snake is light brown, the rest of the snake is just regular brown. So, do a little pin cinch. There we go. Now this next one is black. and I don't want to weave in two black tails for one black, so I will float this black. I'm allowing myself the occasional float, but in general, I'm not trying to float the black. And now one light brown. And that black there, that's the eye of my snake. It's, the, it's just one random black. There will be no black coming off of it later in the future. So I'm allowing that one float, and I guess it'll be another float because in the next row, it's got to float back. Hopefully it's not seen on the front. But from here on out, I'm just going to twist the gray and then do the gray lace patterning and then come back. I have finished this side. My carriage is right there on the right. So I am going to hand change my row counter. So as you can see, um, with this, it's it's a little complicated. You have to keep track of all these different yarns. Um, you have to make sure they're twisted, prevent holes. You have to weave in ends. There'll be a lot of ends I'm gonna have to weave in. Some I've woven in as I go, others I'll have to creatively weave them in. And I have to, yeah, keep track of all of that. Do I float here, do I not? How, how do I do this little area? It's, it, 
it requires thinking to every small section. How am I going to do this? So I hope you have fun doing any intarsia project in the future.